Hello, my name is Rob Earl, and I'm a part of the developer advocacy team here at Sidecore. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can set up an instance of Next.js Commerce powered by Sidecore or the cloud. So let's dive straight in. Now, before we dive straight into the demo, I just want to do a quick recap of what both Sidecore Order Cloud and Next.js Commerce are. Sidecore Order Cloud is an API first, headless e commerce system. It's designed for you to build B2B, B2C, Marketplace, and most of the common other e commerce solutions. Also, it's really easy to get up and running. You can go to ordercloud.io today, create an account, and you'll instantly get a sandbox allowing you to start building out your e-commerce sites. Next.js Commerce is an all-in-one starter kit designed for high-performance e-commerce websites built on top of the Next.js framework. This gives you an example B2C storefront which you can get up and running in just a few clicks. It also integrates with most of the major e-commerce vendors out there. And as I said, today we're going to be using Sidecore or the Cloud to power this. So, I think that's enough of the recap. Let's dive in and see this in action. Okay, so I've started off by loading up the Vercel.com site here. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new project. Now, when we're in here, we can choose these different templates that we want to clone, and we're going to choose the Next.js Commerce template. We're going to give it a name we'll remember. So let's call it Commerce Order Cloud. Happy for it to be a private repository. And then we hit the Create button. What this is going to do now is it's going to go away and provision me a GitHub repository automatically, containing all of the source code required for this. We're not going to add an integration yet. We're going to add the Auto Cloud integration just afterwards. So we click skip on there. And what this is going to do now is using that Git repository that it just provisioned, it's going to basically check out the code from there, create a new Vercel deployment for us create a default CI CD pipeline, provision us a domain with a HTTPS certificate as well. And all of that with a couple of clicks. It takes a couple of minutes to run through the first time. And if you expand this building tab down here, you can go through and see the steps that are actually being performed as it happens. As we mentioned before, this is a Next.js application. So it's statically generated. So that means it's going to go and check all the code out for this. And it's going to actually generate all of the HTML pages that we need. And here we go. We can see now it's starting to generate these static pages. You can see it's calculated that 23 were required, and that's how many it needs to generate. And we can see we get the success page now. The project has been created in GitHub. There's a Vercel project tied to it, and that's been successfully deployed. If we click the Go to Dashboard button here, that's going to take us through to the Vercel dashboard. You can see we have the title, Commerce Order Cloud, which we typed in previously. And you can see we have a domain that's been generated. If I click on this now, um, you can see we get products and things in here, but it's all just statically generated. It's all powered by data in the repository. There's no link to a backend e-commerce system yet. So that's the next thing we need to do. We need to actually tie this into Order Cloud. I'm gonna close this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the settings page here. Um, we're gonna go to integrations. And this lets you browse the marketplace of Vercel for all the different integrations they have. If we scroll down, you can see the first one listed is Sitecore Order Cloud. If we select that, and then we're going to choose to add the integration. I need to add it to my personal accounts. And we're not going to add it to every project, because I've got some projects in there which aren't commerce specific. For example, my personal blog. So we're just going to choose the one project we added to, and that's the Commerce Order Cloud project we created. What this is going to do now is it's just going to prompt me to log into my Order Cloud account. I have an existing account, we enter my credentials, and then it's got to set up a new marketplace in there, which is what's going to hold all of the data required to power this e commerce store. I'm happy to seed a new marketplace. I want it to create a new one for me. So we click apply, and off it goes and does all its seeding. I'm just going to make this a little bigger because there's going to be a few rows that appear. And we can see it's going through creating all the different types of data we need. So catalogs, users, categories, products, basically all the different data that's needed to run this B2C store is getting seeded now into our new Order Cloud Marketplace. So that's completed now. And if we go back and we look at the actual project itself, 
If we go to our settings here and inside our environment variables, you can see down here we now have a series of different keys and values, which are what's required for this storefront to authenticate with AutoCloud itself in order that it can pull the data back and forth. The final thing we need to do to be able to test this is actually just redeploy the site. So we're gonna to go to our deployments. This is the successful one that happened earlier. And I'm just gonna choose redeploy. The reason for this is that when it was deployed the first time, none of those environment variables existed. So it was just using data statically included with the repository. Now those environment variables have been populated. It's gonna make calls over to AutoCloud to actually get real data from that backend e-commerce system, which is what we want to start seeing. If we go and expand the building tab, once more, you can actually see what's being processed here. We can see it's already starting to build out those static pages. And there's 37 of them in total that it's actually gonna build out. And it gives you a running output. You can see it's completed nine of them now. And this is gonna carry on as it generates each of those pages. It'll update and show us how many it's actually got through. Okay, here we go. This is looking pretty good. It's built all the static pages now. And now it's just deploying the actual output. We scroll back up, we can see we now have the ready status showing and we can see that our order cloud commerce domain has been generated. So if we click to visit the site, this is going to take us to this specific build that was just pushed out. So you notice the URL is slightly different than before. But here we go, we can see this site that's now there. We can see we have our black hat, our bomber jacket, our champion jacket, the products that are being pulled out of order cloud. If we look through the site, we have those products we just saw. We also have this kind of marquee view of the products below. We have some hero control here with a bit of textual data. Again, same three products listed out and, and this carries on. It's a pretty standard B2C storefront. It's, it's something we all use on a very regular basis. So that's pretty cool. We can see how simple it is now to set up for sell commerce to pull in that data out of order cloud. But how does it look on the actual order cloud side? Well, if I go over to ordercloud.io, and I'm just going to use the portal button here to log in. Once we get into here, this is the first screen you're going to see when you log into Order Cloud. And you can see I have a series of different marketplaces for various other projects I've worked on. And this one on the bottom, the Vercel Commerce Marketplace, is the one that was just generated automatically when I added the Order Cloud integration into my Vercel project. If we go over to the API console here, we can actually start to send some requests into that marketplace. The first thing we need to do is to make sure we have the right context selected. So I'm going to go down and select again my Vercel Commerce Marketplace we just created. And let's take a look at some of the catalog data. That's going to be the easiest thing to test. First of all, I'm going to get a list of the catalogs defined in that marketplace. And we can see there's just one and they've called it Solitary Storefront. If we copy that ID, we can then go and see the products that are available in that catalog. And here we can see the same three products we saw before. So we have our black hat. You scroll further down, we've got our bomber jacket, and there we have our champion jacket. The same three products we saw displayed on the home page before, but you can see here where the data is actually coming from. It's all being pulled out of order cloud. I guess the last thing to take a look at here would be the GitHub repository. If we go and search for my repository here, we can see we have my commerce order cloud GitHub repo. And this was created just over 10 minutes ago, back when we started this. If we scroll through, for anyone who's worked with Next.js before, this is gonna look really familiar. You have your pages folder with all your page definitions, component trees all in your components folder, and then you have things like, you know, Next config. This is built using TypeScript, so we have like our TS config. Pretty standard front-end development nowadays. There's also a nice fully explained readme that comes with this, showing how you can connect to your e-commerce platform of choice to pull out the actual data. Okay, so that's pretty good. I, I like that. It shows how you can get this project set up in Vercel and in GitHub and pulling data from Order Cloud, but it's still very kind of hello worldish at the minute. It doesn't show you how you can actually start developing with it. What I want to know is if I want to customize this storefront to my actual store to actually start using this, how can I start to build with it? Well, it's really easy to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to clone out this repository. So we're going to copy the SSH command and I'm just going to hop over to VS Code. We're going to move into my new projects folder, and then we're just going to run a git clone. That's going to pull the repository we just saw in GitHub down to my local file system. We've done that. 
We'll open the folder itself. And then we'll see all the files that we just saw in GitHub displayed in VS Code here. So what I want to do is I want to get this project running locally. I want to make a change and test it in that local environment. And then finally, I want to commit it up to my GitHub repository and have it deployed out of the cell for people to view. So let's get started. I'm going to use the terminal in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the NPM packages required by this project. This project built in JavaScript. There are a series of NPM projects which are required to run for this. So running the NPM install command will pull all those down out of NPM and install them ready for local use. The next thing I'm going to need to do after this is to connect this to AutoCloud. And remember all the environment variables we saw previously in Vercel? Well, we're going to need those locally. Now, I could go and create a .env file myself and go and manually copy and paste all of those variables in. But that's quite a tiresome process. You don't want to have to have all your developers going through that process each and every time. It's going to be quite a time sink. So luckily, Vercel have a CLI provided which can handle this for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and install that first. The npm install command for Vercel, you can see here, the dash g flag just means it's global. So it's going to be available outside of this project. OK, now we have it here. I'm going to run a Vercel link command. And what that's going to do is it's allowing me to link my local repository here to a Vercel project. So we're going to say we want to link the local repo. And it was in my Rob Earlham account. And it's found it straight away. Because I have a Vercel project that's already tied to the remote repository in GitHub, it already knows where I'm meant to connect this. So we can just approve this. And now you'll see we have a Vercel folder generated up here. That contains all of my access tokens linking my local repository to my remote Vercel account. Now we have it linked. We can do a Vercel env pull. And that's going to pull all those environment variables that we saw declared in Vercel before down to my local development instance. You can see it automatically generates this .env file for us. And all of our order cloud variables are here and automatically populated. So that's everything we need. We're now good to go. The final thing we need to do is run a local development server here. So we run npm run dev, and that's going to run the site locally on my machine in development mode. So it's designed for development, getting fast feedback on any changes that we make. I'm just going to share this half and half with the browser. And what we'll do is we'll load up localhost 3000. And this is basically going to connect to the local NPM instance we just created. And it's going to let me see the site running locally for me to interact with. And here we go. We, we have the same site that we saw before. We've got the different products listed, the black hat, the bomber jacket, the champion jacket. Here's our marquee, our hero text. OK, everything we saw earlier. So I just want to make some changes now that are going to be really obvious. I want to make a change here locally, test it, make sure I'm happy. And then, as I said, I'm going to commit it into my repo and have it pushed out through for cell to my actual live site. And I'm going to make something super obvious. Just keep this simple. So I'm just going to change something on the home page. Turn the out of the way for now. OK, if we look through here, we can see where all these elements are coming from. We have this product grid at the top here with those three products in there. If we come past those, here we can see we have the marquee elements, which is defining this marquee here. Then we have our hero text below. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create my own hero text. I think that's the simplest way. If we move that to the top, and I'm just going to put it right at the very top before this grid component. And we'll say, we'll have to have some new products that are available. Let's do that. So new products in stock. Let's say, check out our new product line. It's great. OK, um, so if we save that, then what we need to do is test it on our local instance. And you'll notice straight away our home page is refreshed and it's shown as that new content. That's because when you're working with Next.js locally, it has hot reload built into it. So any changes I make to the files, they're automatically built and deployed for me. If I bring up my terminal again, you can see when I executed that, it actually it ran another compile here showing these new changes. If I do that again, just to show it, 
when I save, you can see the compiling change is automatically happening and the text updates. So I don't want the updated piece in there. We'll just remove that. I don't want that going out to production. Okay, I'm happy with that. Super simple change, really easy to see. How do I test it? How do I get that change out through my CI CD pipeline to production for people to be able to see? Well, it's not too hard as well. I'm gonna exit my local development server. So that's no longer required. So we'll make this full screen again. What I wanna do is I wanna check this change into my Git repository. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that change to my local repo. So we'll do a git add, and we'll start everything in the pages folder. We'll check that's correct. Yep. We'll do a git commit. We'll give it a message, go new, home page hero. Okay, and the final thing we'll do is just to push that out to my remote repository, out to my remote GitHub. And that's done. The next thing we need to do is to bring up my browser again and we can see all this in action. Let's make that full screen once more. And I think the first thing we'll do is we'll go over to GitHub. Let's, let's check this out. We'll refresh that page. And straight away, you can see the pages has changed. The pages folder has this new commit, new homepage hero. We can click on that commit and we can go and see it. And you can see this is the change I made earlier. Okay, so how do we get that to deploy to Vercel? Well, if we go back to our main Vercel site and we'll go to our commerce order cloud project and we'll go to deployments. And you can see it's already happening. This is automatically building this out for me. That's because any change that gets committed to my repository, Vercel monitors that and pushes it out straight away. If we click on this textual link here, that'll take us directly to the change in GitHub. So we can again see directly what files have been changed. If we click on the link here, it'll open up the actual deployment itself to give us stats on that. We can see the build was super fast. This time it only took 49 seconds. So once more, we'll click on this visit link. And there we go. We can now see a new site here running in Vercel, including our new homepage header here. Okay, so I really love that demo. It shows how simple it is to get an instance of Next.js Commerce powered by Sitecore Order Cloud stood up. We did all that in just a few minutes time, and we went from having nothing created all the way through to having a fully functioning developer environment with CI/CD build out pushing to a production instance. If you want to trial Cycle Order Cloud today, you can go to ordercloud.io, create a free account, and you'll get access to a sandbox allowing you to try out the various different APIs there. If you want to try Next.js Commerce, you can go to nextjs.org/commerce. And there's a whole heap of documentation there designed to get you up and running with the starter kit really quickly. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to follow the Learn Cycle hashtag for future videos.